songs that made the hit parade. Guys like us, we had it made. Those were the days. This is my favorite part. I would have to be Archie. <laughs> you be Edith. Welcome to this week's Wacky Moments of Liberal Expression. Let the record show that this week's 2019 Radio Television Digital News Association First Amendment Awards Dinner served as yet a new example of how there's no profession that loves itself more than journalists. The First Amendment Award was given out to CNN for their post-Trump presidential coverage. Carl Bernstein provides the self-aggrandizement. You need to provide your own barf bag. This has not been a time for a conventional news mix. Rather, the choices made about what is news at CNN have been essential to framing the national debate. Well, they certainly know a lot about framing at CNN, don't they? Funny, you know, they didn't mention that $275 million lawsuit for defamation and bias launched against them this week, but, you know, it's a dangerous time to wear a MAGA hat and have your face shown on CNN. One thing CNN's decisions have not done is to give its viewers fake news. <laughs> Keep telling yourself that, Carl. Flashback time. Hey, do you remember this from October? Love. Exciting and new. Come aboard. You can't go 10 feet without an interruption from a Beto backer. So much. I love you too. Thank you all. You're a rock star. No, you're a rock star. Well, ABC's Paula Ferris' schoolgirl crush returned this week. Good morning to you, George. So Beto O'Rourke is now the 15th Democrat to put his name in the hat. He's expected to hold his first official campaign event here in Iowa a little bit later today, and he promises to run a very positive campaign. Winning the endorsement of celebrities like Beyonce. And now he's appearing on the cover of Vanity Fair, the star politician weighing his options, saying, you can probably tell that I want to run. Oh, a Vanity Fair cover. But you know what? She, she's not the only media personality that's swooning over O'Rourke. Breaking news, it's official. The high-profile Democrat announcing his presidential bid this morning. The big name in the Democratic Party making his White House run official this morning. The former Texas congressman announcing he's running for president. O'Rourke saying the interconnected crises of the economy, the climate, and the nation's democracy have never been greater. Uh, Evan Smith uh, in, at the Texas Tribune said seeing him is like it's like a Jesus Christ superstar seeing this guy in front of people. He's got that celebrity aura about him. Uh, Ah, yes. Some in the media are already comparing him to the Kennedys. Of course, the one thing that uh, is Kennedy-esque about him is his driving record, but in the liberal media's coverage, they don't mention his 1998 DWI accident, where police reports claim he attempted to flee the scene. Indeed, a strange media silence. Okay, two things that the media did decide to actually air this week enter to the realm of self-parody. I warn you, you may want to turn away right now because you will never be able to unsee what I'm about to show you. First, CNN last weekend had a segment with an author informing you that if you like political candidates who work for smaller government and believe in the Second Amendment and desire less taxes, you're killing yourself with whiteness by voting for them. Peel and replace Obamacare protect the Second Amendment, create jobs by cutting taxes. Those fights rage on, obviously, for years. But one researcher says the people who send those candidates to Washington are actually hurting themselves. They're, they're more likely to die from inadequate health care, from guns or opioid addiction. So why do they continue to vote in a way that may be killing them, he says. Professor Jonathan Metzl says it boils down to the core of so many things in American politics, and he says that is race. Uh, Jonathan Metzl, professor at Vanderbilt University and author of Dying of Whiteness, How the Politics of Racial Resentment is Killing America's Heartland. That this messaging that comes often from the president and the NRA and people but basically tells white Americans that you can't compromise, that if you compromise a little bit, uh, you're going to lose everything. And ultimately Ultimately, what I argue in the book is that that is, is to the detriment. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just when you think things couldn't sink any lower for that award-winning CNN, well, guess what? They do. President Trump expresses concerns over the technology that's used in the Boeing 737 MAX 8 that follows crashes and complaints about their operating system. So CNN decides to report on what they think the feelings Trump is trying to evoke because somehow that's news. 
and then they break into song. This, this actually happened. Yeah, okay, so w go back to a plane from the 1960s or 50s or whenever he was born and try flying on that now and see how that suits you. Look, I think <laughs> that it's not about the facts, it's about the feeling that he's trying to evoke. Things used to be better before and then fill in the blank. Technology, again, I think he's on weak footing on that. Yeah. But, you know, before these newfangled industries, before this multiculturalism, before this everything is okay and everyone's equal, before let's make ourselves great again. I say to Gosh. people all the time, when were we ever greater than we are today? Boy, more free, way more inclusive. Glenn Miller play. Songs, Songs that made that the hit parade. Guys, Guys like us, we had it made. Those were the days. This is my favorite part. I would have to be Archie. And you knew when you were <laughs> You'd be Edith. <laughs> guys were guys, men girls were girls men. Men were men. Yeah, award winning CNN folks. I'm Eric Shiner from RCTV. Let CNN serenade you out. We'll see you again with some more media wackiness next week. Songs that made One thing CNN's decisions have not done is to give its viewers fake news. I, would have I cannot imagine. remember a period in our national history when the news on a network has been less fake or contrived or rooted in manufactured controversy.